Where's Greg Kinnear? 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 I don't feel that I have lived off Diana. Relying on sitting on their ducks. I enjoy it. And now, here's your host of the award-winning talk soup, Greg Kinnear! Oh, yeah! With the ear-piercing consistency of a Charles Barkley wine, it's the award-winning Talk Soup. Back on your airwaves one more time, checking out highlights of the talk shows. Great program for you today. We'll be visiting with some of our good friends from the KKK a little longer. Or in a little while, if you prefer. Also, Kiss and Cousins, and a guy who will recount a story of getting a javelin in the neck is coming up in a couple of minutes from now. Don't miss that. First up, relationships. Relationships between in-laws can sometimes be a bit rocky, no question about it. You may not always appreciate the guy your daughter married, and maybe on occasions you'd like to wipe your mother-in-law's face with a Brillo pad, but chances are... You won't want to do this on national television and rip into them, but that's not the case here. Uh -uh, you're about to meet Diana and her son-in-law, J.R. They showed up on the program along with her daughter and his wife, Jenny, and Jenny's grandma also showed up on the Jenny Jones Show, and this is what happened. Take a look. I don't feel that I have lived off Diana. I don't feel I have lived off Marva, and as far as Jenny's dad goes, that is not part of Diana's family because she couldn't get along with the man when she was married to him. That's why he got rid of her. Oh, he got rid okay. of me. Okay. So, you can, you so know, one second. Let along. me just interrupt you. We haven't talked to Marva at all. Who is Jenny? This is your grandmother. You have a tough time getting a word in edgewise when you're having in a conversation with Archie. That's been his trouble his whole damn life. Thought, why do you call him Archie? <laughs> I thought his, your name Ar was JR. his name is Archie Minchu Jr. And they call him yeah. Jr. You, you like these first of all, I have never... Archie because they know it irritates me. No, it's not. <laughs> that's why they do it. Because I hate the name, and that's my dad's name, and I've always been called Dale. Shut up for five up. minutes. No, you shut up. You have the rich, we snotty went, that I can't read. Wait, one second. Oh, no, 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 please. please. You've you had please. everything to your satisfaction all your... Okay. She's okay. had seven kids okay. and worked for seven every kids, seven years. That's right, and I want yeah. everybody to know this. These and people can't kids. go to the bathroom. Same time that none oh, of them don't yeah. get hurt. You know what? Okay, they call me. Why, Bob? Why? I wish they'd all shut up. What are they talking about? Bunch of intolerant ignoramuses. That's the last time I married the checker at the Piggly Wiggly. Wow. You could actually hear her thoughts. That's very interesting. That is the highlight of Jenny Jones there. Let me tell you, this show was ugly from beginning to end. That, of course, Diana and Jr., who never got tired of yelling at each other. Monday on Jenny Jones, we're going to hear from kids who feel their parents give their siblings, and this doesn't seem fair, special treatment. Let's check in with the McGillicuddy clan one more time, shall we? Let's shut your mouth! You are shut yours! 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 Nation's divorce rate is sitting uncomfortably at 50%. This has caused financial hardships for many of the suddenly single people, especially women in this country, and this could not make Lou Filzer happier. How do you pronounce that? F-I-L-C-Z-E-R. Filtzer. He couldn't be happier. Lou's the founder of ADAM, or Adam, American Divorce Association for Men. He told a very ticked-off Maury Povich audience that divorced women have been sponging off men for years and years and years. Women in this country expect too much of relying on sitting on their ducks to have a man take care of them. Isn't it a Who wants to respond to this? Men, men huh? show their love through their pocketbook. Huh? Why no. can't women do the same thing? How many men do you know I of did. that get alimony? I'm sorry. 
Now, no, what I my agree with this idea that that we have to take care of. With my husband, I stayed home. I took care of the children. Well, I brought work. up my go children. Work. He's working. I working. have been trying to find well, a job. Sixty percent of the married Look, women are out there working. Why are these sitting on their jobs? A woman of my age to try to find Wait, work. I have me. a history of cancer. I mean, get out there and go to work. I had a heart attack. It's I am there. not employable. This is not big welfare USA, or is it? Is this socialism? There's well, an what, example. What are, socialism. what are you saying? What are you saying? This is socialism. Any, Big any man or any man should take care of the woman. What are you saying, Lou? Any I want man, equal rights. Any man who walks out. How many women come up with the money and Lou, take care of men? Lou, any man who just picks up, walks out, leaves the marriage, leaves the marriage. They're contract. not ignorant of that. They knew this was coming. Excuse Why didn't they me. go out and get themselves trained or get a job? Well. Lou, do I do I smell sour grapes a little bit? Hmm? Did you have three wives leave you, divorce you? Sad man, aren't you? By the way, any takers for wife number four out there? Or do we? Yeah. Monday, Maury Povich will hear the story of a woman who tried to sell her one-month-old son. Her plan backfired when her own mother called the cops on her. There'll be no more baby selling for her. Monday. What? Is it bad, the hair today? Oh, you went like that. Oh, you're scratching your ear. Sorry, Jonathan. Well, the javelin throw, the graceful run, the powerful hurl, one of the great combinations of elegance and strength in the wonderful world of track and field events. However, this next gentleman, Jeremy Campbell, although he always admired the javelin throw and excelled at it, has given it up. That's because an eight-foot javelin was launched through his neck some time ago. Did not stop him, however, from having a sense of humor about the whole thing as he recalled this episode to Mo Gaffney. Now, yeah. what happened when you went to the hospital? Well, what, what happened when... Did they take you and the javelin and put what, you in the ambulance? Well, I mean, that's a big javelin. They, they were, were... First, they thought they were going to send me by ambulance to a nearby hospital, but then when the, peop, the medical people actually got there and saw the situation, they decided they'd send me to a trauma center. So they called in the medevac copter. But I couldn't fit with, obviously, an eight-foot javelin sticking out of me. It's just not going to happen. You know, you can't leave the, leave the window open that high in the air, so... <laughs> They, uh, apparently, this guy comes up with a pipe cutter and goes, I'm a certified plumber. Everybody stand back. <laughs> so, I I'm thinking, oh, no. <laughs> when anyone's been speared now? by a javelin, I always go, is there a plumber in the house? <laughs> but I guess they rethought that, decided that using the pipe cutter and spinning it around would be too much of a vibration. So, they, uh, called the fire department to bring out the jaws of life and they snipped it with they that. They just snipped it off. Yeah. There you have it. Jeremy finally made it to the trauma center where he underwent surgery. Later on in the show, he described the wound to Mo Gaffney. And it went through my earlobe down into here and came out down here above my chest bone. He's got a nice looking scar there too, look at this. <laughs> Monday, Mo will examine one of the great injustices in America. Why are men allowed to go topless and women aren't? Doesn't seem right to me. Yeah! Stand up for what you believe in. Coming up on Talk Soup in a moment, surely we'll hear about romance behind bars. And a patriotic strip club owner spells it out in plain English. Well, I think it's all very simple. The girls want to dance. I want to own a club. People want to come in. This is America. No problem. We're back. Wednesday, Montel Williams peered into the sometimes sleazy, sometimes sordid world of adult entertainment. His guests included a woman who works at a peep show, a woman who strips naked for liquored up patrons, and a guy who runs a club where men oogle naked over women. Watch. What do you think when people come in, they say, well, this is degrading, this is this, this is that. What do you think? Well, I think it's all very simple. The girls want to dance. I want to own a club. People want to come in. This is America. No problem. And Danita, why do you dance in this club? Why do you go dance there? 
Why? Why? Because I enjoy my job. I enjoy it. The money has nothing to do with it. Well, of course, the money has a lot to do with it. I mean, I have a daughter. I'm married, and I mean, I make good money at what I do. And you travel to do this. I yeah. won't say from where to where, but you travel multiple states to get here, work in a club, and go home. Yeah. So you're making enough money to do that. Right. Okay. All right. Yes, ma'am. I have a three-part question for uh -oh. either one of you. First of all, Christy, are you in a relationship now? And for both of y'all, if you are in a relationship, how has it affected your relationship, the, job you, the jobs you do? And do you take these fantasy, fantasies home and use them on your husbands or mates? <laughs> well, well. That was pretty good. She did that well, too. Okay, answer. How about yeah, it? The first I'm one. I'm in a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, it's fairly serious. No, I do not take any of the fantasies home with me. And as a matter of fact, after I get home from a night at work, the last thing that I want to do is get wild in bed. Also on the program were five housewives who went to a strip club and tried to reason with a stripper, and Montel had some cameras there. You seem like you have so much more to offer than to stand up here and expose yourself to get and run all these lazy, slimy men. Right, I understand, but they're not all slimy. You know what they're looking for? They're looking for friendship, companionship. Half of them don't even want sex. Hmm. Kind of an interesting discussion. Yeah. Montel Williams talks with parents who follow their kids behind their backs. Spying on your teenager, Monday. Well, Shirley, yesterday, talked to women who are involved in relationships with men who are in prison. Leanne appeared on the show to talk about a gentleman who is currently serving time in prison, who she's madly and hopelessly in love with. One audience member had a question for Leanne about her husband's chances for contracting AIDS. You said that you've developed your relationship with your spouse while he's in jail. Have you, and now you're pregnant. Have you had an AIDS test? Has he? I don't know if he has or not, but I have had in the past. Well, what about him? He's 50% of that child. Do you um, care? Why, why do you think she should have an AIDS test? You don't, you don't know him. You don't know what he's been through. Oh, that's a good point. Oh, well, oh, yeah, well, I've had, I've had the him. test since I was first with him, and I don't him? imagine he's terribly active in there. <laughs> what about before? <laughs> that is a fantasy. That oh, is a what definite about before? denial. That's what? Sorry, Dr. Morrison? That's De a different there is show. no such no, thing that's a different show. as people who are in prison being celibate. The incidence oh, of AIDS, the incidence show. of HIV is much higher in the prison population. The people who are getting AIDS and HIV not all from sex. is occurring while people are in a prison setting. It's not so, all from sex. No, it's from drugs. She's just, I don't think that Dr. Morrison is implying it's just from sex, Tom. No. She's saying it's all drugs, kinds of methods. Drugs, sex. Sex. Yeah. I wanted to have another child. I tried very hard to have this child. I'm 40 years old. It's my sixth child. Uh, there is no other way to get pregnant. Many, you've sorry. been married five times? Yes. Right? <laughs> wow. Lou was three, I guess. Leanne only spent one week with her husband before he was thrown in jail. She's had conjugal visits with him for the past three and a half years. She's currently pregnant with his child. Wow, Monday, Shirley is taking the show to Jamaica. She and a panel of experts will be talking about ways to spice up the old love life. Veteran film actor Brian Dennehy can now be seen regularly on a new TV show, a series that will be starting up shortly called Birdland. Then he plays a owner of a number of birds that he no, I'm kidding. plays a psychiatrist who likes to gamble and frolic with his young girlfriend. He recently showed up on Good Morning America, and Chantal was there to ask him about the difference from TV and film. Take a look. I could probably name on one hand the number of actors who can move effortlessly from movies to television and back to movies, and you're one of them. What do you think it is that you have that allows you to do that without people saying, that's an odd career move? I'm not sure that that's true. I, you know, what's happened to me in the movie business is that uh, I get offered interesting roles, but they don't want to pay anymore. They're prepared to pay the first actor, the number one actor, and maybe two. Mm -hmm. The ones that they have to pay. And everyone else kind of, you know, you, you sign on if, if it's something that you want to do. So you're saying to me, you don't think you can open a movie? Oh, no, no. no. I, don't, I, I don't even know what that means. And I think that except for a handful of actors. Like Harrison Ford? 
Harrison Ford, Tom Cruise, Kevin Costner, uh, Julia Roberts, who just proved it again, mm -hmm. uh, and a few others, uh, and I mean a handful. Right. Uh, I think Al Pacino is back there again. Um, there, there are only a handful of people who can do that, who can really be guaranteed to open a picture. It was the very reason we postponed production on Talk Soup, the motion picture. Birdland, starring Brian Dennehy, airs Wednesday nights, 10 o'clock, A, A, B, I never heard of it. Monday, Good Morning America, actress Mary Steen Burchin talks about her role in the new Jonathan Demme film, Philadelphia. ABC, right? Coming up, Jerry Springer confronts members of the Ku Klux Klan, and Jane Whitney's going to hear from a woman who survived a gunshot from a co-worker right after this. Like going for seconds at Okie Dog, it's Stock Soup, we're back. There was some troubling dialogue on Wednesday's Jerry Springer show. Jerry's guests included a mother and son who belonged to the Ku Klux Klan. Also in the show was the mother's daughter who does not agree with her mom or brother's views. Here's what happened. This is your mom? Your... You talk to them. Nathan, why do you have so much hate? Why do you think you're better than the rest of the people? That they can prove to me that they're just as powerful as I am or as uh, can reign as supremacy like I can, then they have the right to run right with me. But if they can't, they can go back where they came from. Excuse me? What do you mean go back where they came from? Well, let's see here. Africa, uh, Israel, wherever you want to call it. Where are you from? I'm from Tennessee, America, born um, and raised. Excuse me, that gentleman there, I dare say, was born in the United States of America. Okay? He was born there probably before you were. Mm -hmm. So maybe he's to say to you, you get out. Highlighted Jerry Springer. The number of hate groups and members of the KKK in this country are rising year to year. Monday on Jerry Springer, it's women, women, and women. Also guns. Tune in. Find out what the hell I'm talking about Monday. Wednesday, Jane Whitney examined the disturbing trend of violence in the workplace. She spoke with Angela Bowman, a woman who was shot when a disgruntled former co-worker opened fire at the printing company she worked at. Angela describes the events that took place on what undoubtedly was a horrible day. Take a look. What happened on that day? Well, I'd been back from maternity leave about two weeks, and I was in the lobby that morning. The regular receptionist was coming in, and I was about to leave. We both stood, were standing. The elevator doors opened, and we couldn't see the gun that he was carrying, but there was just an immediate eerie feeling that something was wrong. He just looked like a monster. And so he walked across the room toward us, and Sharon said to him, uh, can I help you with something? And at that point, he dropped the gym bag he was carrying on his arm, and he had the AK-47, and he just started shooting across the room. And um, she screamed, and a a bullet hit her and she like flew about six feet, hit a wall and slid down. I went the opposite direction. I was blown kind of underneath a desk. And he went out into the hall and did some shooting. He came back to get the bag that he'd left. And the whole time I'm thinking, what has happened? I mean, I saw the gun and I knew that you use guns to shoot people, but I kept thinking, did he knock me down? What? It was like my body just couldn't realize what was going on. I was just really hot and real sick, and I thought I was going to pass out. And the bullet did, in fact, go through Angela. She lost part of her spinal cord and is now paralyzed from the waist down. That's the highlight of Jane Monday. She's going to be examining the case of the Wolf of Hollywood. Is he a sleazy casting agent, or is he the victim of a publicity stunt by some actresses? You'll find out Monday. Got one more highlight for you in a moment. A couple of cousins who are doing... A whole lot more than just kissing. Next. It was a storybook romance for Jennifer and Uriel. Two met at a family picnic and fell madly and hopelessly in love as they frolicked in the meadows and bubbly brooks. Eventually the two sealed their love for each other by taking their vows and sealing their love with marriage. They revealed on Ricky Lake that everything about the relationship is perfect 
Except for the fact that the two are first cousins, and there's some legality problems with regard to that. Moreover, Jennifer's sister, Kimber, is deeply disturbed by the relationship. Jennifer, you're ill. Now's your chance. Run. Run on national TV. I'll Run punch out you the on door. national TV, too, so I would be quiet. <laughs> She's got her brainwashed. This is a b booze I smell on your Yuri? No. Uh, wait a minute, so. wait a minute. Let's, let's, have let's that's, get... that's bad breath I smell on her. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's, let's yeah. stick to the issue, okay? Let's, you know, we're all adults here. We shouldn't have name-calling or insults, okay? Let's, let's try to be, we're being fair. We want to hear both sides of the story. But this, obviously, Kimber, has pretty much ruined your relationship with your sister? No one can ruin our relationship, but it's, it's, um, put, a it's damper put a damper on, on it. Absolutely, okay. because this is just, it's ridiculous. We don't live in the Ozarks where you just settle for anyone who happen, you happen to grow up with or who yonders over the hill. You know, you have a multitude of women to choose from, and God knows you've been with plenty of them, including other cousins. But, uh... Whoa, bringing out that true. dirty laundry today, Kimberly. I don't really know what to do here. Uh, Dana, do you want to, do you want to field this? That was on Ricky Lake on Tuesday. Okay. Thanks. Monday on Ricky, former best friends will try to reconcile their differences. Tune in Monday, Ricky Lake. Well, that's going to do it for this show, folks. I'm Greg Kinnear. I've got a Splitting headache. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Coming up next, it's the show that lets you see all the latest trailers of the hottest films coming attractions. Coming up next, so get out your popcorn and throw it at the people in front of you.